Hey guys, it's MJ, the Student Actuary, and we're going to be looking at Chapter 9, which is Loan Schedules in Subject CT1. And how we want to just start this off is we want to realize that there's two ways to calculate um, loans. The one is prospectively, and the other is retrospectively. So prospectively means that you take um, all the future values and you discount them to get the present value. So imagine if you see a timeline over here, prospectively means you calculate the value in the beginning at time zero. Alternatively, you can calculate your loan retrospectively, which means calculating it right at the end of the timeline. And to do that, you accumulate the value of the loan, and then you subtract all the accumulated values of the payments made to date. And what I mean by accumulation means it will have that interest component we built onto it. So to give a quick example on how this all works, let's say we have a loan of £50,000 with level monthly payments in arrears, and we're going to be doing this for 20 years. Our interest rate is 4% effectively. Our monthly payments, we're using the prospective method, is we look at the value at the beginning, uh, time zero. We have 50000 um, of our loan here. And remember from my previous um, chapter on the equation of value, we equal this to 12 times our monthly payments and we use the annuity function which calculates uh, you know, the monthly payments. We then subtract the two and we will not subtract, we take this and we divide it by the 50,000 and that gives us our monthly payment. Now we can use the retrospective method to calculate the amount outstanding at the end of the 11th year and what we're doing here is we're accumulating um, the payments and we're working it out to see that after the, 11th, after the 11th year, we've still got £27,000 and a few other. And very quick uh, example, I went through it very quickly. If you feel free to pause the video and just go through it yourself. Um, I do want to move on to um, interest and capital because what we're going to find is every loan payment comprises of an interest component and a capital component. And it's very interesting when you draw the size of these amounts on a graph, you'll see that it forms a pattern. Uh, your interest payment starts off very, very small in the beginning and becomes a very large chunk of your payment at the end, whereas your capital is the opposite way around. Or oh, no, sorry, 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 uh, I lie. The capital component um, is very small in the beginning and becomes very large at the end, whereas the interest component is very large in the beginning and becomes very small at the end. That's because the first payment you make is basically covering off interest and just a little bit of it is taking away the capital. And then your next payment, it has slightly less interest because there's been a capital shave, which gives you more to shave the capital off again. So let's see how you can calculate this. So if you want to know what are the different components of each payment, you want to calculate your outstanding loan immediately after the previous payment. Okay, then you can calculate the interest component by just multiplying it by the effective interest rate. And then you can calculate the capital by taking that interest component and subtracting it from the payment. And that will give you the, uh, the capital component. So I've got another little example here. Um, feel free to pause, read through and go through it yourself. Uh, but it's just a follow on from that previous one on how I've taken the components and I've separated them. If you want to calculate the interest and capital um, elements on a series of payments, then what you can do to get the capital is you calculate the capital repaid by using the following formula. The loan outstanding before the payment minus the loan outstanding after the payment. Um, and to calculate the interest, you take total payments made minus total capital repaid and that residual would be the interest. Again, uh, feel free to pause the video and check out the little example that I've gone through. Um, a nice way to get your head around this whole loan schedule is to actually draw up this grid. You can see that my loan starts here. Um, this is my repayment. This is my interest component. This is my capital component. And you can see how the capital component is increasing and the interest component decreases, like I mentioned before. And you can see these two values make this value here. This value is that value minus that value. And you want to just go through it and you'll see it, it all makes intuitive sense. And yeah, that's just finishing off the example. You can pause and work through that yourself. 
Um, then there is this other thing, flat rates of interest. Um, it's just a very simple type of interest. I don't even think it, it's examined um, in the course anymore. So I'm not going to spend too much time going into it. Um, but it's basically something that um, companies use when they sell stuff. Um, they would quote this, this annual percentage rate. And this is just a formula to convert it back into an effective uh, rate. But yeah, that is loan schedules. Um, if I went through anything too quickly, please let me know in the comment section and I will give a better explanation there. Thanks so much guys for watching and I'm going to make a chapter 10 which will be on project appraisals right now as well. So stay tuned. Cheers guys.